Today is Trinity Sunday, and as you may expect, the Trinity speaks of God in terms of three. We say Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We sing Holy, Holy, Holy. I confess that I miss the Athanasian Creed, which we used to say on this one Sunday a year. It used to be in LBW, it's not in the new book. Yes, there were problems with the creed, that creed, but if you read it as poetry rather than treatise, you got three uncreateds, three infinites, three eternals, three almighties, three gods, and three lords. All the while remembering that these three are in fact one. Confused yet? As I spent this week figuring out what you say about the Holy Trinity on the day when you're installing a senior pastor, I came up with some questions of my own. Three of them, in fact. It occurs to me that whatever the style or the form of Christian worship, God is inviting us to grapple with three questions. First, who is God? Second, who are we? On the one hand, who are we left to ourselves apart from God? And on the other hand, who are we embraced by God? Who is God setting us free to be? And the third question is, of course, why do the first two questions matter, really? So let's tackle the third question first. The questions of who God is and who are we matter because they do. Deep down in our bones, we know they do. Because all of us have faced, or will face, a moment when something happens. A plane crashes. A child is abducted. A job is lost. A war erupts. A toddler is diagnosed with cancer. A teenager experiences discrimination firsthand. A dad who runs every day drops of a heart attack. A grandparent is stricken with Alzheimer's disease. A police officer fires her weapon. A pastor crosses a boundary. A congregation is broken into the church building and violated. We feel helpless. We wonder if there is divine help. We wonder if the divine will be helpful. Who is God and who are we? We usually ask these questions in places like emergency rooms, intensive care units, funeral homes, or when we're lying awake in the dead of the night. We're all confronted by circumstances that cause us to ask whether life has any meaning. Is there someone beyond what we see? Is there a reality beyond what we perceive? Is there any meaning or purpose, rhyme or reason to it all? Who is God and who are we? As people of faith, we spend our lives trying to answer these questions. And people of faith all throughout church history, going all the way back to the events of the Bible, have spent their lives trying to answer this question. Somewhere along the way, in church history, the councils of Nicaea and Chalcedon described, decided to describe God in terms of Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one and three, three and one. They spilled a lot of ink 
trying to describe God correctly, and alas, we've spilled a lot of blood punishing those perceived as describing God incorrectly. So God is Trinity. But how do we know? How do we know that the way we describe God is the way God really is? There's only one thing I know for sure, is you don't find the answer in church doctrine. Nobody that I know has ever said, I want to know who God is. I think I will open the Nicene and the Athanasian Creed and study them until I understand. We try to do that to seminarians. The answer is not to be found in the Creed. The answer is to be found in relationship. In God's relationship with us. In the way God is active in our lives and in the world. God creating. The one who says, let there be, and there is. The one who created humanity in the divine image. This is the God who is the power behind the images we see in the Hubble Space Telescope or in a grandmother's iPhone. This is the God who Isaiah describes as sitting high and lofty on his throne, the hem of his robe filling the temple. God living among us. This is the one who descended from heaven. This is the one who was lifted up from the earth that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. This is the one that God sent because God so loved the world. This is the one in whom we have life forever. And God, the power within us, poured out into the world. This is the God who blows like the wind. This is the God who gives us birth by water and the Spirit. This is the God who adopts us as God's own. This is the God that, that bears witness as we dare to cry to God, Abba, Father. No, who God is, the answer to the question, is not to be found in doctrine, but in relationship, our relationship with God and God's relationship with us. There's a hymn that goes, come join the dance of Trinity. Do you know it? Come join the dance of Trinity. It doesn't invite us into a doctrine. It invites us into a relationship, a dance. Pastor David and I have publicly been dancing with the Trinity for decades. We both know ourselves to be men of unclean lips who live among a people of unclean lips. We also know ourselves to be people whose lips and lives have been made clean by the triune God. Recently, both David and I heard the triune God say, Who shall I send? And who will go for us? And both David and I answered, Here I am, send me. And we find ourselves in Michigan. The hymn calls, Come Join the Dance of Trinity. And Pastor David and I have been publicly dancing with the Trinity for decades. And in some of the verses of life's hymn, we have been privileged to dance with the Trinity together. In three verses, in fact. In Binghamton, New York, where an ailing congregation was without a pastor, David was the kindly family physician, and I was the emergency room attending physician, the surgeon. 
and the triune God brought the healing. In Warren, Pennsylvania, where several ELCA congregations needed to come together, Dave was the visionary, and I was the prophet. And we are still praying that the triune God will be the uniter. And a few months ago on the phone, when I was the bishop and spoke ex cathedra, that's from the chair, that's when the bishop says things with the church's authority. Dave, I think God is calling you to Grand Rapids. <laughs> and Dave was the faithful servant who dared to hear the voice of the Trinity in the voice of an old friend. The triune God was the power at work in the call process. Would you agree? Now, 20 years ago, when Dave and I used to have lunch together in Binghamton, New York, even five years ago, when Dave and I used to get together to sample wine, if someone had told us that we'd be here today, we wouldn't have believed it. Would we, Dave? No, right? Except for one thing. Anything is possible when you come join the dance of the Trinity. The church has decided to describe the, the dance as Trinity. Father, Creator, always bringing life. Son, living among us, suffering with us, rising to new life. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the power at work in our lives and in the world, the power that makes God real and relevant when we gather around word and water, bread and wine. I promise you that Pastor David will teach you and preach to you about this doctrine of the Trinity. I also promise the day will not stop there. Dave the will help you to see and to know and to own all the ways that God comes to us. All the ways that God relates to us. For God will not allow our descriptions of God to limit our access to God or God's access to us. It is not faithful to Jesus to say, we have never described God that way before, because until Jesus, no one ever described God lying in a manger or dying on a cross. As for my second question, who are we? Who are you? Pastor David is going to help you figure that out. You see, in naming all the ways that God comes to you, together you're going to figure out who you are apart from God, but most importantly, who you are embraced by God, who God is freeing St. Luke to be. Because you're going to come to meet God in the neighbor and in one another, and in the stranger. And as you come to meet God, you will know who you are and, God, and who God is freeing you to be. And when you know who you are and who God is freeing you to be, whole and complete and bound to Christ, you just cannot help making at least your piece of the world better. The hymn goes, come join the dance of Trinity. Today, 
I ask David if he commits to be your partner. And I ask you if you commit to be David's partner. We call it an, inst an, an installation. It's really an invitation to dance. I've danced with you both. And I know you both to be, St. Luke and David, good partners, faithful partners, and excellent dancers. So I will ask David, will you commit yourself to do the new, this new trust and responsibility in the confidence that it comes from God through the call of the church? And I will ask you, do you receive David Blank as a messenger of Christ, sent to serve all people with the gospel of hope and salvation? Will you regard him as a servant of Christ and a steward of the mystery of God? And I fully expect you to say yes. And we ask God to help us. And then dance, the new dance with the Trinity begins. And I'm excited to see what will happen when you come join the dance of Trinity together. Amen.